Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turnwright Machine Works. My name is Keith, and this is The Clash at the Bash Part 3. Okay, yesterday we got a nice tube in the mail. Keith Fenner, and this is from Tom Beams. All right, and uh, he put get her done over here, priority mail. Anyway, nice tube. So I uh, saw he taped this end up, and I pulled the cover off. And uh, we got we got something coiled up in there, but I wanted to read this. It says Keith, here is a larger version of U2, meaning myself and and Adam. The sight of it almost broke my plotter. <laughs> Big smiley face there, Tom, and uh, uh, Mount Upton, New York. Awesome, uh, Tom, and. Uh, and I, I see your address right here. I'll be sure to uh, uh, get you a, uh, a sticker on out your way there. Um, let's let's take a look at what we got here. All right. <laughs> okay. I think there's two of them here. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna reverse roll it, and then I'm gonna. Uh, we're going to be getting this on, on the wall. Now, I took down some fishing pictures here and here. All right. Now, this is the most appropriate place to put this poster here because this is where I clean up. <laughs> All right. Clean. <laughs> Clock. <laughs> oh, by the way, I cleaned that. Okay. So, anybody got a challenge, bring it on. Uh, clean your clock. <laughs> All right, let me reverse roll this and we're going to get it up on the wall. Tomorrow I'm going to go down and get a, a piece of plexiglass that I can put over the face of this. <laughs> Pretty awesome, Tom. Pretty awesome. I, I don't know what to say. I actually, I'm having some new bling made that I'm getting ready that will be going to the, uh, the bash with me and uh you're definitely you're definitely in for one of those and i'll have a few other things going your way this is unbelievable it's pretty nice I, <laughs> I didn't have too many options on uh wall space but like i said this is pretty clean you know this is this is my bathroom I, this is not the urinal here but this is uh, <laughs> this is my wash sink here and uh pretty awesome all right, this is a reminder. There's only hours left to get on to T-Blasters. This is the site. All right, Adam. There ain't no green screen to save you this time. I'll see you at the bash. Better bring your A-game. All right, guys and gals, we only have hours left for our T-shirt campaign that Adam and I have at T-Blasters. And here's the link. You need to get on there. And you need to order up a shirt. You pick either the Fenner team over here on this side, or you pick Adam's team on that side there. All right, and uh, both both shirt sales, 100% revenues are going to uh, stand at Barzy Industrial for the Barzy Summer Bash 2017. It's uh. I, I'm grateful for everybody out that has already bought a t-shirt and come on help us push that mark on up and help us push as much as we can to the summer bash it's a great event and uh, each time each year it's getting bigger and bigger okay let's run down the basics June 24 2017 Rancho 
Cucamonga, California. The Bar Z Summer Bash. All right, you can register at this link here. All right, and on uh, Facebook, you can check it out at this link. Uh, don't don't forget. <laughs> Watch out for the shiny ones, Adam. <laughs> I can't help it. I just, it's just, just. <laughs> all right. Um, we're having fun, okay? And you got, we want, we want you to join us, okay? Most important, log on and buy one of our campaign shirts so that we have a, a bigger sponsor for the bash this year. It's just, it's, it's some good numbers there. It's unbelievable, unbelievably grateful. I know Adam is also grateful. For everybody um, that has been participating in there, and I mean things like Tom, and then uh, the the uh, the decals being made the other day, um, <clears throat> you know it, uh, uh, it it's fantastic. Everybody's participation. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of substance in this video, just like I have in the other two, and the videos that I'm gonna show you is actually from my. Uh, it's not on me now because I had to have room for my truck keys. Watch out for the shiny ones, Adam. Um, so anyway, I'm going to call it Behind the Lathe. Scenes from Behind the Lathe. Um, so I took them with my Note 4. I, uh, I get uh, comments in my videos. Hey, what's that chirping or squealing when your lathe starts and everything else? So behind the scenes of the lathe you're gonna find out what was causing the chirping and uh, how I remedied it and uh, a few little tricks that all come into play in between there alright so let's take a look at the scenes behind the lathe alright this is a sample and a jig that we have for our mill for drilling the cross holes um, for this yoke there's a cross pin here and then you have the tiller head pivot here and we have a box of castings and we're already set up in the the lathe here it's it's held in there it's not dialed in yet I'm gonna get my uh, surface uh, gauge and then run and, and I uh, I align them with my surface gauge uh, right off the bed of the cross slides there um, but before we do that, we've got a job that we have been getting ready for, and this is 5A52 matching belts. And as you have heard in oh, recent videos, and it gets worse with each video, the chirping sound on my closing. Well, we got the path cleared. Had to move the hydraulic uh, pump for the, the tracer unit. Over the side, we moved our uh, Leslie drill sharpener uh, over here so that we had this corner to slide in our rolling um, support for behind the lathe because I actually I carry a rolling support. I'm going to set these up here, and uh, we've we've cleared off this this uh, area behind here uh, because we this we have just enough room to get our cover off of here to work these belts. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm going to put you down and I'm going to go ahead and remove this cover. I'm going to take it outside because I think it's uh, it's pretty grimy. And uh, we might be uh, doing some cleanup with some uh, degreaser, automotive degreaser. And then the garden hose uh, really works pretty good. All right. And it's a little dark in there now, but when we get the cover off, we'll be able to see the uh, whole assembly. And uh, we're going to take a look at our oil problem as well. Okay, we brought this outside. We are in the shade, but you can see how much stuff has accumulated in there since January. Let's see. I think it was I was moved in finally by about March of 97. And uh, that was the last time that cover's been pulled off. Okay, walking back in here, and 
Here we go. All right, there we go. All right, so we've got we got some oil soaking on the first couple, and it looks like we got some dry rot on the other ones there. And you can see the oils weeping right there from that upper input shaft seal. And there's a mechanical break right there. Uh, before anybody flips out or whatever, I I tripped the uh, the breaker on the box there, so I can stick my phone in here and everything else. Uh, let me get the right. Now let's go answer that phone. Okay, it's kind of hard to get the light and the camera down in there, but I think I worked out an angle here. If you look at the second groove out, you'll see a, a black uh, uh, buildup in the bottom of the groove. That's just uh, that's you know rubber that's. Uh, been rolling around in between the belts and sticking down into the bottom of the groove so it, it probably builds up and then it helps to lift the, the belt up a little bit um, so anyway i'm going to loosen up the motor we're going to get these belts pulled off and get a better look right down on that v-belt pulley kind of clean that all up before we put the new belts on all right we slipped the belts off and now we're going to get in here and we're just going to start taking the caked off stuff that's been uh, building up underneath the belt. We'll clean those up. We're taking a look at our gear train back here. Missing tooth there. Right there. Okay, those same, those same two teeth were missing when I started running this lathe back in 1995, 94, 94, 95, I really started pushing on this lathe, all right, and uh, you know, that, that gear's never been changed out over there, so I've always been running in the high, high range. Okay, and we got a pretty good buildup of chips down here, which is an area you can't get to when this cover's on. All right, so we're gonna do a little wiping down. Uh, we'll put a new coat of grease on on these gears here, and uh, we'll wipe the general area, clean up the pulleys, put on the new belts, adjust them, get back to work. Okay, this is looking inside. I'm going to set this thing down because it's pretty heavy and uh, I'm in the light if I'm not. All right, this is the brake unit and you can see there's the brake linkage, comes on up, dog legs over, spreads the cam, and there's the, uh, the brake shoes on the closing. Now, this is the oil seal that's been leaking and uh, I got Orleans Auto, uh, they got one, it'll be here at 2 o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to douse out the, uh, the oil, clean it all up. We're going to clean up the rest of our stuff back here and get ready. And then we're going to dig that seal out as soon as we have it in hand because uh, we can't be down down. Um, and if I have to order one tomorrow or whatever, but um, I want to pull that out and then put in the new one. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if I got a, uh, a collar to help push in the new one. Uh, so that it sets in there at the proper um, distance and when we pull it out we'll actually see uh, because I put this seal in back in I think 95 somewhere around in there I already got the grooves on the pulleys cleaned out we got the cover to play with let's get her done okay uh, Orleans Auto saves the day Brand new seal, just come in. Everybody has a little different way of uh, pulling out seals, okay? And we're going to be replacing that seal right there. So I took, this is a needle out of a needle gun. I pierced the hole. It went in about oh, a quarter inch. And then I take a regular packing puller. And I go ahead and I get it in here. Okay, now I can pull on this or whatever and it's kind of like rough on my fingers and stuff. So I decided to go get go get a 
a helping hand here. So I just want to go ahead and get a pair of vice grips here so I have a prying surface and I'm just getting a hold of the head right there. Alright, and and I'm just getting my my bar in here so I can pull that lip seal right on out of there. Alright. Cool, a lot of oil behind there. Now the oil level's not that high, okay? So this is just oil that's in here that goes through the bearing and then flows back down through a port right there. And uh and this seal. I gotta undo my vice grips on here. Alright, we'll get this out of here. This seal. I don't know, still feels soft and pliable. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick our calipers in here. We're gonna see if we can get a dimension on that shaft again. Um, and then uh, wipe it down and we're gonna look in there and see if there isn't a, a, a groove or a seal set in there. We have a little bit of latitude to run this thing in farther if we want to. Okay, just, just barely under one and three quarters there. And the seal in here measures about 1698. So we we've got we've got good we've got good contact on on the rubber there. Okay, I'm looking in there and it looks good. The oil feed is on the top there and I uh I think it was out too close to the surface there. I'm going to push I'm going to push this seal all the way in this time and get uh, some new surface down in there. And we're going to see if riding in a slightly different area will improve the seal on, on it. Um, this is, it, it could all, you could almost put two of these in there, which uh, I've seen that before. But I think just one here. So I'm going to get a little bit of lubrication there to put around the shaft. I'm going to put the key up here at the top. You don't want to make sure that that's not interfering. No, nope, it's not. Nope. Okay, I'm going to go get a little bit of uh, grease. I want to lubricate the rubber part of it first. And then we'll slip and tap that all the way in there. Okay, a little brake clean on here. It's evaporated. And uh, we took and we put a little brake clean on this. It's all clean. We're not going to touch anything. We're just going to slide this baby right back on here. There we go. And then it gets a... Uh, a nice cap on here. Uh, oh, it's not half, it's 9 16 And I had that here somewhere. Here we go. Okay, we'll double check that when we. Uh, Get the belts on. Alright, ready to rock and roll. Okay, throw on the power. And move a few things out of the way here. Okay. Okay, we're out here so that you can see the uh, belts a little closely. All right, you know, I like to say I got my money's worth out of that, but uh, I think I got a little bit more than that. But I did have to listen to that squeaking. 
and uh, until I felt like getting back there behind that lathe and and uh, really moving some stuff around and seriously taking care of the problem and you can see there's chips being blown around chips do get embedded in in the belts okay um i hope i hope you enjoyed uh, just checking out me being me and uh being patient um you know we we <laughs> we had to wait for the seal i wasn't going to put all of that back together without having that seal in there and it also gave us a chance to go ahead and do our review on that uh, um, easy thread tool and that was that was totally awesome i hope you have a chance to uh, check out that video as well all right um here we go we're coming down the stretch a couple hours left get out there get your shirts get her done <laughs>